Let's talk about the most common vitamin deficiency in migraines. If you've ever had a migraine, it can be debilitating. It creates this hypersensitivity of your smell, your sound, your sight. So you want to stay in the dark. It can increase the impulse to vomit or feel nauseous. So apparently when I did this research, I found something that I didn't know before. The majority of these migraines are genetic. And I do know from studying genetics, this doesn't mean that you have to live with it. It just means that you have to understand the epigenetic factors, those things that are above your genetics that potentially could help you override this genetic weakness. So when someone has a genetic problem, they have a limited capacity for doing a certain thing. But if you understand the epigenetics, maybe you can override it. And in five to 11 clinical trials, there was significant improvement in migraines. Now, four of the trials were mixed and two of the trials didn't show any results, probably because it wasn't genetics and there's some other cause to these migraines. But migraines, a lot of times they'll affect the ocular, the eye. And so if you do have a problem, especially with one-sided eye problems, I think this remedy is going to greatly help you. There's various theories about, you know, migraines and no one really knows for sure, but there's a huge relationship between your mitochondria and these headaches, especially a hypo underfunctioning mitochondria. There's some type of dysfunction in the mitochondria that doesn't allow it to work correctly. And this particular vitamin is involved with an enzyme that helps you preserve the aerobic metabolism in your mitochondria. That just means with oxygen. And so when you're taking food and turning it into energy, it's all about oxidizing it and using oxygen to help make energy. And without enough of this vitamin, apparently what happens next is you get this overexcitation of the nervous system, the brain. And it's kind of weird because you have this low mitochondria that accelerates the neuron itself. And there's a lot of free radical damage, inflammation, oxidation, which directly relates to the mitochondria. Because this vitamin also helps you build up glutathione, which is kind of like a sponge. So what is this vitamin? It's riboflavin. It's vitamin B2. But normal amounts don't really apparently work. You have to increase the amounts of B2 to override this resistance of B2. So you'd be taking like 400 milligrams per day. But apparently if you have this genetic problem in your mitochondria, uh, you're going to need more B2 to make it work. And what this vitamin is going to do, it's going to help this um, hypoxic state or this state of low oxygen. It's just going to preserve and allow this oxygen to work through the mitochondria. And another little side note to this is um, in Parkinson's disease, which is a brain problem, uh, one of the earliest indications for Parkinson's is the failure of the glutathione mechanism. So apparently if you don't have enough glutathione or you have too much oxidative damage, it can seriously create um, damage to your neurons. This is what I'm going to recommend and definitely put your comments down below if it helps you, but start taking 400 milligrams of B2 just as a prevention. And now let's say, for example, you start getting a migraine. What I would recommend is like, instead of buying, I don't even think you can buy 400 milligrams in one tablet, you know, get them in 100 milligrams, wait an hour, take another 100 milligrams. Wait an hour, take another 100 milligrams. And keep doing this until your migraine is gone, but don't exceed 400 milligrams a day. But the point is, I wanted to put this very interesting connection between B2 uh, and migraines on your radar so you can use that within your tools to help yourself. One cause is basically a sodium deficiency. So just taking more sea salt can reduce migraines and headaches pretty quick. The other thing about these migraines is that there's usually always this oxidative stress for radical damage issue. So just by taking some powerful herbal antioxidant, you can many times get rid of the migraine as well, whether it's ginger or turmeric. Those are the two that I recommend. You can try either or. Now, just from the standpoint of headaches in general, I did a video on other potential causes that you need to know about as well. And for that information, check out this video right here. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why you need to be increasing your salt if you have migraines. Now there's several reasons. There's a condition called hyponatremia, 
basically that's low salt in your blood. Normally your blood should be salty and most of the sodium should be outside the cell and then you have potassium inside the cell and both of those together form an electrical charge which gives you kind of like a, a battery in your cells which creates a voltage in your nervous system to activate muscles and also allow the nervous system to work correctly. One of the top symptoms for hyponatremia, low sodium in the blood is headaches and migraines, okay? But that's not the big reason why you should consume salt if you have migraines. It's this, people who suffer from migraines have a mutation in the potassium channels in their cells, okay? They're stuck wide open. So if you have a problem with that channel that's stuck open in the brain, you're gonna get excited nerves. And that's gonna create a lot of electrical problems in the brain. In fact, there's some really interesting research on that. I'll put the link down below. But right now they're looking for some way to block potassium in the treatment for migraines. Now there's some other interesting data in other studies, I'm gonna put the links down below, that indicate migraine headaches lessen when you increase sodium. So why would that work? Because if you have open potassium channels in the brain that are giving you way too much potassium in the brain, guess what's happening to the opposing mineral since potassium and sodium work together? You're going to create this major imbalance. Why not just increase more sodium to help balance out this potassium? Since the sodium-potassium ratio is very important, and then if you increase more sodium, you'll naturally bring these potassium channels down. So this is what I'm going to recommend. So right before your headache, start consuming more salt. So instead of doing the normal recommended amount, which is 2,300 milligrams of sodium, do more 4,600 milligrams of sodium. Now realize that when you're looking at sodium chloride, salt, only 40% of that is sodium. 60% of that is chloride. So I'm recommending several teaspoons of salt per day to get that sodium where it needs to be. So you can put it on your food. You can mix like one eighth of a teaspoon of sea salt to your water, like an eight ounce glass of water, drink it down. Now, one little simple thing that you can do to see if this is going to work is when you get a migraine, put a little bit of salt underneath your tongue and see if the migraine diminishes. If it does, then you probably have this problem and you can be helped by simply adding more sodium to your diet. Now, I want to talk about all the reasons why you can be deficient in sodium that go beyond just not having enough salt in the diet. If you have adrenal insufficiency as in Addison's disease, you're going to be losing a ton of salt. That could be one reason. When you increase more glucose in the diet, you're on a high-carb diet, you're going to be retaining sodium, but it's going to be unavailable. It's going to be trapped within the fluid retention that you have so that sodium won't have the freedom to, to do other functions. If you have diarrhea or vomiting, that can create a deficiency of sodium. If you're on a diuretic, that can also create a deficiency of sodium. If you drink lots of water, that will dilute your bodily fluids and give you low sodium in your blood. Blood loss, let's say you have heavy periods every month, that can give you low sodium. And especially if you have excessive sweating, you're going to lose a lot of sodium. You don't lose typically a lot of potassium, you'll lose a lot of sodium. If you had some major burn in your body, you will also lose sodium. So in this video, I just wanted to give people who are experiencing migraines something natural that they can do to hopefully reduce the intensity. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.